Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 7th of November 2023. Today we have around the virtual table Damien Duporta and myself, uh, Hervé Lemeur, Stéphane Merle and Kevin Martins. Let's start with announcement. So the release 2.431 is out. At least uh, packages were packages and docker image i'm not sure for the change log kevin do you have news on that part or yep uh, it's merged and uh on the site now so live cool um i don't have uh, other announcement uh eventually we will upgrade Kubernetes on the public cluster later today, most probably, uh, or tomorrow if uh, we see a last minute blocker. And I wanted to do it earlier today, but uh, didn't have the proper time to ensure everything will be working as expected. Um, uh, big, uh, but yeah, uh, public PKS upgrade later today. Packed on get Jenkins IO, etc. I don't have other announcements. Upcoming calendar. So next week, uh, two point four thirty-two. Uh, the of November, as usual. Please note that we will also have LTS.1 new release line uh, the Wednesday, uh, November 15, so in eight days. Uh, Mark Wise is the release lead, uh, which means a bit of pressure for Hervé if we, you want to have Windows images uh, for container uh, published. <laughs> but I'm sure uh, you will. I'm, I'm confident in my change. Absolutely. I, I am too, so I'm sure that will be very nicely done. Um, the release candidate was done the six days ago, the 1st of November. I haven't heard about major issue. Something else to say about the new LTS, folks? Um, yeah, uh, for Windows, uh, note that uh, it's uh, GDK, um uh, 17 and not uh, GDK 11, uh, 11 like before. Mm -hmm. Wait, for with the for Windows the weekly, yeah, yeah, for the weekly. Weekly Windows, Windows container yeah. image only. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah. Same GDK 17 by default. So that might require a change log message though. Um, I will there let is, you... Yeah, yeah, I'll add it in the documentation in the change log on Jenkins.io. Okay. The same, as the same warning notes that I've put okay. in the previous, so, yeah. Perfect. I, I haven't checked, but just wanted to be sure that we we had the, the proper glue between the, the bricks. So, yeah. perfect. Good job, folks. Um, hmm. Do we have an advisory announced? No, the last one was 25 of October. So no advisory. Yes. And what about next major events? DevOps World London, 5 of five December. Uh, Tim Yacom will be there for sure. And we will have a Jenkins Contributor Summit uh, in Brussels for the first day beginning of February 2024. Any question on the calendar? Nope. Okay. Uh, so let's get started with the work that we were able to finish during the past milestone. So congratulations for Bruno who is now part of the GSOC team and he has the permission to, to do things. Uh, yeah, congrats. Uh, I'm sure that will benefit us, especially putting the GSOC project on production. I trust Bruno's skills to learn the things in Jenkins I use soon. Uh, really, I, I, I think we will have a really good surprises and we'll have a nice outcome from this. 
Um, Belnet, the Belnet mir uh, is FTP Belnet is a mirror that we have disabled two or three weeks ago after one of our user complained that they were blocked when trying to reach the mirror. So they weren't able to download Jenkins releases. After careful checks um, and communicating with the mirror administrator, we had confirmation that uh, an IP range was blocked uh, on their servers uh, because of uh, DDoS abuse. But that blocker, that blocker was years ago, uh, five or six years ago. So they have removed the blocker. They will let us know if they have a new one. And of course, we have enabled the mirror again and confirmed with the user. So everything is back to normal. So thanks, Belnet, for the sponsoring the Jenkins project. Any question? OK. Next one. So that has been a team effort to track and upgrade the GDK 21 on the wall platform everywhere for every cases. Um, the main challenge was that some architectures, such as uh, S390 X um, are still on the early available, aka preview, aka nightly builds versions, while some are already on GA, such as uh, Intel or IRM. So we had to track properly because they have different life cycles. Sometimes you have an upgrade on the EA version, but not on the GA and the other case. Uh, so we have GDK, the latest GDK 21 everywhere. When it's available, whether it's GA by default or EA if we don't. A nice work on this one. That has been a lot of tiny areas. So yeah. And don't don't know if you have any question on this one. Okay. Uh, Hervé, uh, unsure remove Jenkins IO pages aren't accessible and indexed anymore. So I believe this is closed. Yes. Do you... uh... Um, when I activated the delete option of Blobixfer, we've got uh, many, almost uh, every outdated link were returning uh, 400 uh, um, and three errors because uh, um, the directory where this outdated page were uh, contained only this page. So when they were removed, uh, the web server uh, was attempting to list the empty directory and return it uh, zero. So by removing this empty directory, uh, the web server now redirects to uh, the um, not found the page, which is better than uh, pure error. Well, not pure error, but uh, um, yeah, server error. Um, and uh, for uh, a good part of the documentation on uh, yeah, uh, our documentation page, I've uh, put in place some redirection. So uh, users are and uh, getting a um, uh, four of four uh, error page when uh, searching for Jenkins documentation on Google, for example. So users are blocked from um, I think or old Google results. Nice work. Anything else to add on this one? No. no. OK. Last issue we were able to finish is the planning for supported GDK version in Jenkins infrastructure. So that was removing GDK 19, which is not supported since months, since March or April, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, updating CI Jenkins IO online documentation to point to the GEP from Mark. Uh, so that's. That has been done. Uh, nothing else to add here, unless you have questions. <coughs> nope. Okay. Uh, we had an issue uh, like every week. Someone tried to reset their password on account Jenkins IO while they think about that Jenkins controller account. Looks like they never answer. So I guess. <laughs> 
Now, work in progress. Uh, I'm going to update the priority order. So step one is update center. Just a minute. <sighs> Okay, being ill is not fun. Uh, award an update center. Uh, as a reminder, the goal is to finish the POC for an update center using mirror bits, uh, which will delegate most of the bandwidth to, uh, to a set of Cloudflare buckets. We have one right now uh, that could also allow us in the future to have other, uh, the other location for downloads. Um, so we were able to uh, finish and validate the the script, the update center script uh, for the parallel copy and mirror bit scan. So at the end of the parallel copy on all the location, then we trigger mirror bit scan. Uh, timing is one minute 20 to one minute 50 with a lot of change. So that looks like it should be okay with the three minutes once we will integ uh, integrate the, the generation. <clears throat> we were able to fix the HTTP 500 Apache errors. So now if you go to azure.updatejenkins.io, you have a working update center, which is not updated regularly yet, but it's working. So now the main, the two main tasks now, uh, the idea is to hand over to Stefan on that part. And I will take some of the minor issue and Stefan will take the major because I'm a lazy person, of course. Um, first step is the Jenkins infra slash crawler. So we need to update that script so that it copies the files it generates to the update center mirrors, because this is also served under update Jenkins IO. Uh, this uh, repository generate the Jenkins tool installer definitions and they are signed and integrated with the update center index to copy files to See mirrors. Uh, then, after this one, we will have to do a full end to end test to update uh, mirrors regularly. So, that means merging the work we did on the pull request of the update center 2 to the real life world, or at least validate with Daniel that it works on a test case. The goal is to ensure that generation and copy takes less than three minutes for the UC. For crawler, we don't really care because it's run once a week. And once both of them will have been done, then we will be able to run a Jenkins to new UC test. So the goal will be to spin up a Jenkins controller in a container instance and set uh, its uh, update center to the new URL and see if it works. If we can download plugins, then we will have to test the Jenkins plugin CLI and other scenario. But the goal is to see if we have a functional uh, a functional update center. If it works as expected with the redirect, etc., then we will be able to start writing a GAP to describe the changes. Uh, the changes with the POC as a proof. These are the top level uh, major elements. On my side, I will have a few minor changes around credentials and variables, but these are not worth mentioning uh, today. It's uh, technical implementation details and nitpicking mostly. Any question or need for clarification on that topic? No? Okay. Stefan, are you okay to work on this until Tuesday? Of course. Yes, yes. Perfect. Uh, and Hervé, if it's okay for you, we will hand over for next milestone. So one milestone, Stefan and I, and then the next milestone will be either both of you or you and I. 
Ist das ja, okay? Schon. Ja. Cool. So move to next milestone. Next topic, RM64 agent. Rick, can you give gives us a, a status on this one? Uh, yes, hello. So from uh, the last development uh, update uh, is that uh, Cert Manager on Datadog mm -hmm. uh, is running in ARM64 now. Yes. We um, I had to do it in uh, uh to take uh to to review my first uh, request as a uh, set manager uh, have three services and i moved only one migrated only one at first and uh, mm -hmm. for datadog uh, agent uh, datadog cluster agent i've added a node selector by mistake uh, to the agent while it should have been only for the cluster agent. So it prevented the uh, Datadog agent pod to be spawned on every node of the cluster. And uh, we noticed that because LDAP was in, uh, had triggered an alert on pager duty. Uh, at first I was, I was wondering why only LDAP and not every other uh, service on x86 uh, uh, node and it was because LDAP is using uh, more advanced uh, monitoring like process monitoring which the other services don't nice um, nice job so what are the next candidate for rm64 migration uh, the plugin side backend api api uh, I have to take a look at the issue, but next I, uh, in the uh, last uh, one, I think it will be uh, weekly that Jenkins that uh, weekly that CI that Jenkins that IO or demo uh, controller. And mm -hmm. do you think that uh, plugin side front end and the front end shouldn't? Yeah, I don't think the front end has uh, it's not a problem because it's served by a web server. So, yep, that's what I thought. And there is one I don't know a plugin site uh, issues. I don't know what the, what technology is used and if it's ARM64. Uh, let me just take a look at uh, the issue. No, but not, not, it not, was... not, not, not now. Um, yeah. The goal is just to mention yeah. that. We don't know. There might be risk on this one. So if it's okay for you, you can proceed with a, a API front end and with weekly CI as soon as possible. Does it look yeah. good for you? Yes. Cool. Uh, okay, that should be good for the next milestone. Is that okay? Yes, and uh, it's the last one. Um, plugin site issue. We have already the image available. And just as a note for later, mm -hmm. but as Mirobit's development um, repository has new activities, I intend to propose a request to build Mirobits in uh, to cross compile Mirobits. So we'll get we will be able yep. to have uh, an official image to deploy Mirobits in ARM. Yes, uh, the <clears throat> looks like the author said the before end of year a new release. So honestly, I don't think we should plan for mirror orbit on RM64 yeah. now, yeah. Uh, if that's okay. I will sort, uh, yeah, put it, uh, postpone it uh, in and the issue. By RV to upstream to have RM64 uh, binary. Okay, cool. Um, uh, if you have, uh, yep, yep, sorry. Uh, Kelly contributor mentioned uh, that Debian is providing uh, an official Mirobits package in ARM64, but yeah, an we official. won't use yeah, we won't use it. I... Yeah, it was just a different mention. Different it was different. just a mention. Uh, uh, here we have for planning for the infra and right now it doesn't exist and is not supported, so we don't use it and we stick to Intel. Um, do you think it should be doable? And you can say no, it's an open question 
to start building uh, images such as Docker Helm file or Docker HashiCorp tools to both Intel and ARM64 and start uh, scheduling infra CI agent on ARM64 not pool. Do you think you will be able to start this work this week or should we just delay uh, uh, later? We can add it as a bonus step. Okay. CI ARM64 agent as bonus step. Nice. Not pool and then Docker. Okay, cool. Um, I also have something to report here. Uh, Falco to RM64, uh, because we have daemon set on Falco, not the main application, and it's uh, failing and rebooting on public uh, cates due to uh, issue. Um, still need Falco version bump. I plan to run that operation as part of the Kubernetes 1.26 upgrade. So if we have an issue on the cluster, that will be due to the upgrade magic. <laughs> we'll then be able to blame this new can, version. Exactly. Uh, Kubernetes is so hard to upgrade. Anything else to add on the RM64 migration? No. Good. Okay. Okay, any question, clarification, Stefan, Kevin? Nope. Okay. Uh, next step, my um, I'm reporting about Kubernetes 1.26. So EK is done. And earlier today, the private cluster was upgraded. Um, so for EKS, <coughs> uh, sorry. First, I need to move RM64 to, oh, already done, to the new milestone. <clears throat> For Kubernetes, uh, we still have the public uh, cluster to migrate. That's the last step. Uh, Stefan and I paired on this one. We wrote the issue we had <clears throat> mainly on Amazon clusters. Uh, we were the, the system was refusing to upgrade the VPC CNI. So that's the plugin in charge of uh, maintaining the network inside the Kubernetes cluster. Because it said, hey, I they cannot you cannot bump two minor versions at once. You need to do minor by minor version. So we had to bump manually from 1.13 to 1.14. And then Terraform took care of upgrading to 1.15. So the good news is that the work we did during the past upgrade are working. We can upgrade both Kubernetes and the add-ons at the same time on the same pull request. So this is an improvement since last time, but now we have this new one. That means we will need to set up update CLI. There is an old issue where we will use the AWS EKS command to retrieve the latest available version for the currently used Kubernetes version. Once we will have done that, <clears throat> we will have regular pull requests between the, the Kubernetes upgrades that will try to bump the add-ons version because for a given Kubernetes line, the, the add-ons has its own life. In that case, the add-on will already have been upgraded to the proper version before the kube upgrade. So that's why we should have this. But it's written, and if we don't have time for that, we will have to know for the person in charge of the upgrade on 1.27 that should happen before end of year, ideally. Um, that person will have to take care at least to upgrade manually the, the add-ons before. End of year. The... Yes, I, I'm a challenged person. I'm a challenging okay. person. Yep. Uh, that's all for EKS. The rest was quite easy. 1.26 is a minor, it doesn't have a lot of changes. Uh, we also upgraded AKS, so the private cluster that went very well. Oh, I forgot to tick this one. Um, <clears throat> we had two issues. One is uh, due to me, I forgot double quotes. And the magic of the Jenkins M chart, there is no validation of the syntax of the YAML files past to the config maps, unless you do your custom Elm chart like we do for job DSL. I upgraded the GDK tool yesterday for the issues we mentioned earlier today. 
And I forgot double quotes on GDK 17. So thanks, Stefan, for helping me on hot fixing this one. Because once we upgraded the cluster, InfraCI restarted and was in error constantly due to that syntax error. So that should be an improvement on the Jenkins official and chart. And we should have our own mechanism to check that. But yeah. So that one was a human error. Uh, second one. Last time we had issues and we accidentally deleted and recreated the public IP during the past upgrade on the public cluster. So we did a short term solution by adding an Azure lock on the public IP. So nothing, neither Terraform or Kubernetes can delete these public IPs. For instance, the public IP used for get Jenkins IO. You don't want to update this one every day. But we discovered that Uh, Kubernetes refused to upgrade because the lock was present on the whole MC system and it was blocking the upgrade. It's a bit too much from Azure, but that's how it works. So that means in order to fix this, either we do like we did this morning with Stefan, we remove the lock, upgraded the private cluster, and then Terraform added back the lock afterwards. We didn't see any public IP change, so that should work for public. However, Uh, last time, Team Yacom showed a solution for us. We should be able to create a custom resource group with the public IP. So we should be able to move this public IP here. And by adding the proper annotation on the load balancer object on Kubernetes, we should be able to continue working as it's. That will put and move the lock on that resource group and not on the MC, whatever automatically manage resource group to avoid blocking the upgrade in the future. I will want to do this before public. So Falco checking the public IP by migrating the private case one, because if we lose the public IP of private cluster, we lose a few webhooks to InfraCI, that's not a problem. So I propose to test on a Dumi public IP and then test on the private cluster. If it works, then we should be able to migrate the public IP of the public cluster prior to the upgrade. Does it make sense? Do you agree can, with we this? We can even, can even use the one that we saw, which is not used as a dummy IP because it's already Yes, in. absolutely. Cool. We need to... Um, to move public IP to another and move the lock to avoid blocking RJ. to be tested on the private gates cluster. Any question here? Then later today or tomorrow, depends on the time. Okay, looks good. So that means that Stefan should be uh, volunteered for the next Kubernetes upgrade, right? Um, hold on, are you, are you talking about the same Stefan than the one I think? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what what are you doing the 23 of December? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be on the on the 18 or 19 of December. Let me think. I have something that day. Is it remember? It's just before your holidays. <laughs> the day before. I mean, you upgrade and then you go on holidays and okay. have fun. <laughs> so that's all for Kubernetes. Any objection, question, clarification, remark on that topic? Okay, so that one move to the next milestone automatically. Um, a new issue cannot spawn Linux RM64 oh, yeah. agents on CI Jenkins IO. I was trying to check the GDK tools on Linux RM64, and I saw where there are on the logs, and after waiting one hour for my agent, I retried earlier today with the reproduction step here on a replay, and I was able to go in real time on the Azure console and see the following message. Oh, cool. Which say that kind of instance, standard D4, whatever, that we use for RM64, 
cannot use a disk greater than 100. And of course, we use 150 gigabyte by default on CI Jenkins. I'm not sure of the solution yet. It's just what I saw. Um, uh, decreasing the disk can have uh, side impacts. Maybe we need a persistent disk instead of ephemeral disk. Um, I believe we should check what is the setting on InfraCI because InfraCI still can spin up Linux RM64 uh, agents. So I don't know if it's because it has a different instance size, different disk size, I don't know. Maybe we, we can have uh, Datadog information about the size that we're using most of the time. If we never cross the 100, there's... Oh, good point. Less risk. Yeah, good point. If we got the data. But it's it's yep. on private, so we should have. Yeah, everything is on Datadog, and you did the work for the ephemeral agent to send their metrics. So, yeah, that. good point. So this one uh, moved to the next milestone. I'm removing myself by default until I continue working on it. Uh, anyone interested can start checking on this one. Um, let me write a note. Ephemeral disk is not allowed with this instance size. To do find a solution, of course, compare with infra CI where this VM works. Check Datadog disk usage for ephemeral agents. G. We need uh, increase instant size. Other good for you. Yeah, no question. Uh, for the next issue. Uh, I would have wanted to have a mock here. Um, ah, okay, we just had an answer from uh, from Alex. Okay, um, I'm not really sure what happened and what uh, Alex saw. Um, I understand when they merge pull request on Jenkins core, uh, they would have expected the build to be stopped immediately when the pull request was cleaned up. <coughs> uh, everything is set up properly even if it's manually set up uh, as I show the screenshots. However, um, it looks like the S3 archiving artifact system we have tends to make asynchronous the deletion um, of, the, of the pull request. That might be a bug on the plugin or an expected behavior, I'm not sure, but sometimes you have to wait one or two hours before the pull requests are cleaned up. Even if, as you can see on the screenshot, it's marked as discard immediately. So. Uh, the timestamp I saw where the webhooks was on time, but then the time for the archived artifact finished being copied and cleaned up, uh, one or two hours can be elapsed. So that could be because of that asynchronous process. I've asked Alex to check if they see another case. Maybe we will have more details. And I, uh, yeah, I think it will be worth explaining that will be related to the S3 uh, artifact plugin. Is there any question on this one? I'm moving it to the next milestone. And I propose we close it next week if we can't reproduce the problem. Uh, mirror status. So this one, no work on it. Uh, good catch folks three weeks ago. Uh, we have four or four errors. One of the main solution will be to switch from OSU OSL to archive Jenkins IO as the default fallback. So we should always have a, for a status HTML and eventually check our synchronization scripts. I believe it could be related because the age of the file might be older than what the retention system they have on OSU OSL. If that's the case, maybe we could regenerate the footer of that file on each weekly release. So it will be updated once a week. That's the other working angle. I was thinking about changing the file, the original file by adding a um, commented HTML, just or touch it or just change its date and see it we, if it's synced to us USL. 
So we need to work on it. So yeah, moving to next milestone. Uh, Stefan, your turn, yes. Gus, status on Packer. Uh, I did start to move a lot of, of uh, tests from uh, the, the script, the shell script to uh, Goss. Um, I did prepare a new Goss Linux version of the file uh, for us to be able to have both uh, Goss Linux, Goss Windows and the common one. Uh, for now, I need to split my pull request and to remove the update CLI uh, that I did and another pull request because it's it's bumping one together uh, because of the process of update CLI needed uh, the file to be here before updating that. Uh, that's all, I think. Okay. Uh, whip on migrating the Linux test the Linux test to GOS full then update CLI. Guys, any question? Okay, let's have a look on the recently incoming issues. Um, so we have an issue opened by Basil implement artifact caching proxy for Maven HPI plugin. Um, I've disabled it, I don't know if you remember. We had an issue uh, when using ACP for that particular uh, use case. I've created an issue on the repository and Basil wanted to have a mirror issue on our repository so we don't lose track of it. Um, so I'm removing triage because it's a valid issue and we are looking at it. Uh, I don't think we have time for this now, unless someone challenged this. I wouldn't, uh, yeah. Just remove the EU. I would let it is for now. Mm -hmm. So we let it uh, in the repository. Is that okay for everyone? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Hervé, you opened an issue about cyber, cyber bits. Can you let us know a bit more about this? While looking at uh, mirror bits contributors, I noticed one of them. Was run, uh, is running uh, cyberbits uh, dot ui uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, and is providing uh, mirrors for uh, open source software. So it would be nice to ask them if they are willing to host uh, Jenkins to to mirror Jenkins to. I haven't done anything yet on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's not on the milestone, so no expectation yeah. for having yeah. worked on this. Do you think we should add it to the um, to the next milestone, or do you do you want to delay for later? Mm, I propose. Yeah, I think we can delay for another week. Mm -hmm. uh... Okay, so I'm moving it to the sync next. Okay. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would not. Yeah, I wouldn't have used that milestone, but we'll see later. Start a new repo under Jenkins Infra for yeah. Jenkins Contributor Spotlight. OK, that I, one was opened by Chris. I, I'd i prefer to start working on this one. To yes. To get moving for Chris. OK, let me add uh, new issues. Uh, no, let's add it to the next milestone. Okay. Okay, uh, I believe we had the discussion last week. Um, yeah. I don't remember exactly. Is there are there any blocker? It's just a matter of starting to work on it. It's just a matter of starting working on it. Cool. So added. Um, then I think that's all. We have this one still try edge. We can remove try edge. Um, we had this one, but it wasn't good first issue. Okay, no more triage to add here. Let's have a look at the infra sync next to see if we have topics here. 
Cyberbit just moved here. We still have the pod restart on public gates. Not sure why. AWS decrease cost for summer autumn. I need to close this one and move uh, on the winter port. Uh, not this week, though. Jira email status from SunGrid. Uh, yeah, and the rest are classical. So if you are annoyed, you have uh, plenty of tasks to pick here, folks. <laughs> Just in case uh, you are. <laughs> if we decide not to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> sleep. You're, you'll sleep when you'll be dead. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, jokes aside, I don't have other subjects. Uh, do you have other topics you want to add uh, to the next milestone or to mention here? No, we can also finish early for this time. Cool. Okay, so then see you next week, folks, and thanks for the work. Yes, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.